Welcome back to the core cutting today where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now, including today, Comcast just suffered a massive data breach. Your personal data may have been exposed, including the last four digits of your social security or birthday. So this is affecting millions of customers. We'll tell you everything you need to know about this and how you could protect yourself if you're a Comcast customer. Bally Sports may have a savior at the last second. Is Amazon about to dump a bunch of money into Bally Sports? Maybe, it's been reported. I have some thoughts on that and that may differ from what I think most people are thinking. And cable TV, uh, viewing um, of the cable TV networks has dropped to a new low. For, um, first time in decades it's been this low. We'll tell you just how few people are really watching cable networks right now. This and a whole lot more coming up here in a quick minute. If you're new here um, and you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. I'll pull a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself. Uh, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, help us grow, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here by hitting that subscribe or hitting that thumbs up. You let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of television and still watch the shows you enjoy. All right, so let's start off with Comcast just suffered a massive data breach. Now, late Wednesday night, they reported this. We got a story up right away, but Comcast reported that millions of customers' data was exposed due to a vulnerability. This happened back in October. They discovered it recently and have made a public announcement about it. This includes hashed passwords. So those passwords were encrypted, but they could be broken, and your passwords could be out there. Contact details, your um, personal information on how to contact you. And the last four digits of your social security number or birth dates for some customers could have been exposed. More details could come down the road, but if you're a Comcast customer, which includes their phone service, their um, internet, their wireless plans, or their television ones, your data may have been exposed. A few things you need to do right off the bat. Change your passwords. Now, also, if you use that same username and password, you know, email and password on different devices, go change those too. Don't continue to use that same username and password. It may not be broken, but let's be honest, it's probably gonna get broken. Um, with that also, no affiliate here, whatever, but I would recommend maybe a credit monitoring software here to help protect yourself. Not sure exactly how much details here will be leaked, but it could be worth your while in today's day and age to use something like a LifeLock out there. I do use a credit monitoring. You may want to look if your bank, credit cards, or other services offer free credit monitoring to help you be aware of what's happening if people are trying to open accounts in your name. Wouldn't hurt. But in 2023, so we enter 2024, unfortunately, you just have to anticipate at some point your data is going to get leaked like this. We had a major one with some wireless providers in the past. We have now have a massive one with Comcast. There's others we probably um, have been exposed in that we never even hear about. So keep that in mind, but Comcast massive data breach. Take a minute, change your passwords. I think Comcast is prompting people to do that when they log in, but make sure if you use that username and password on other sites, which you shouldn't be doing, go change those too. All right, Bally Sports has been in bankruptcy for a while and there's been a lot of rumors that they just may not make it, but now there's a report from the Wall Street Journal that says, Maybe Amazon's about to come in and save Bally Sports, invest in them and um, buy them out, invest in them, partner with them, we'll see. Now, exact details were thin in the Wall Street Journal story. I have some ideas here from talking to people in the industry. Would not surprise me if one of two things happened here. Would not surprise me if they actually did invest in Bally Sports to try to keep it alive, become a partner. I think that's less likely. I think what's more likely to happen here is Amazon is looking at buying up assets or buying up TV contracts rights. Amazon has wanted to get in sports for a while. Maybe Major League Baseball teams that are on Bally Sports could suddenly find themselves now streaming on Amazon Prime, right along Monday or Thursday Night Football and other deals. Wouldn't surprise me that happened. Amazon, if they want to do this too, they need equipment, they need staffing. Buying up Bally Sports' equipment and staffing and production expertise to create these maybe regional sports feeds through Amazon Prime or as a add-on subscription through the Amazon channels could be a great way to um, quickly get in the sports game with minimal effort. Will this all happen? I don't know. Here's the problem with a lot of these reports. For, it's very common for companies to come and say, hey, you know, we're kind of interested in you, Bally Sports. You know, we may have some type of mutual beneficial deal we could work out here. Why don't we kind of kick the tires, share some data, talk about possibilities here. And then Amazon comes in, looks at the numbers and says, you know what, 
no, yeah, this was fun. Hey, thanks. We appreciate it, but we don't think this is a financially good decision for us. And they walk away. This happens all the time. Don't be surprised at all if Bally Sports um, comes in and, or Amazon and has been talking to multiple companies like this. But when they look at the numbers, they decide this just isn't worth it. So kind of keep that in mind. Don't be overly excited about these because these tires get kicked. Somebody leaks the the details and maybe already Amazon told Bally Sports, hey, we're just not interested. What that deal will look like, I don't know. It still could very well happen. We'll have to keep an eye on it. All right, cable TV viewership has dropped to new all-time low in November 2023, according to Nielsen, as core cutting continues to grow. According to Nielsen, just 28.3% of all television viewing is on cable networks now. 36% of viewing is on through streaming, broadcast TV, so ABC, NBC, Fox, now makes up 24.9%, and all other is 10.7%. That other is a big word carrying a lot of weight there. What we're seeing here is streaming is at the highest it's been all year. We're also seeing cable television viewership, cable television network viewership, drop to a new low that hasn't been at maybe since the 80s. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on this, how this plays out. But very clearly, the growth of um, streaming is biting into cable TV, which is increasingly becoming reruns that people just don't care to watch anymore. All right, we have a lot of news to dive into, starting off with Verizon expanding 5G home internet into more areas. Verizon announced that they've expanded their 5G and 4G networks to 20 new, over 20 towns in three different states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Indiana. This allows them to now offer 5G home internet in areas where it wasn't previously available. If you are a uh, Verizon customer who's been waiting for 5G home internet to come in an area and it hasn't been where you are, you may want to check this list. There's a whole list. I won't break down all of them. But you may be able to find out that 5G internet is now available where you live. Check out their website. You can always enter their address and check there. They're increasingly rolling out 5G home internet to more customers. All right. YouTube is cracking down on AI-generated stuff, especially related to the election. YouTube has announced plans to force people to disclose any altered images, AI generate content, and if you don't, they may take action against your account. This is in preparation for the 2024 uh, upcoming cycle here as we look at this. I love this. I think um, YouTube should be trying to force disclosing when things are AI created. The problem with that, with that is detecting and really knowing when it's AI created. Sometimes that's easy because you know somebody actually didn't say that. Sometimes that's harder because that may not be somebody you know. It may not be a way to prove that that's actually been there. Apparently, I forgot to um, update that. But YouTube is cracking down on the growth of AI-generated content that may be misleading people. And I love that. We'll see how it plays out. All right, Tubi, Pluto TV, and the Roku channel are now some of the most viewed streaming services in 2023. Right alongside... Um, with some of the major paid services, we're now seeing free services. Part of the growing trend in core cutting to cut back and move to free ad support services. Maybe no surprising, YouTube right here, not YouTube TV, just YouTube is the number one most viewed uh, streaming service with 9% of all television time there. Netflix at 7.4, Prime Video at 3.4, round, round out the top three. But Tubi is at 1.4%. Uh, the Roku channel 1.1% and Pluto TV at 0.8%. Now you compare that to Paramount at 0.9% and um, Max at 1.2%, Disney Plus at 1.9%. Some of these free streaming services are very close in actual viewership day, um, time compared to some massive paid services that many would think would be significantly farther ahead. These numbers come from Nielsen and they're the most recent numbers reflecting the November 2023 data. All right, Roku has been rolling out testing of a home screen. You've heard me talk about this a lot. I get a lot of questions about when is it going to come to you? What exactly is being tested? I have a full link down in the show notes down below down there where you can find out everything you need to know about Roku's new home screen, breaking out the new app icons, the new settings, the new look. Check it out if you want to learn more about Roku's new home screen down below if you want to find out that full breakdown. And lastly, before we get into the stories of the day, Apple is reportedly building a new AirPod 4. This next generation AirPods will be significantly different than the first generation with a new design and the ability to function as a hearing aid. 
Now that hearing aids aren't regulated the same way, companies like Apple can use AirPods to also double as basic hearing aids for people who may struggle in certain environments, may not need a hearing aid all the time, but want one when maybe it's a loud environment and they wanna be able to better hear people. So check that out, link in the show notes down below. All right, let's dive into the questions of the day. Every day I try to answer a question or two from the audience. If you have a question, leave me a comment. Start it off with something like a question for Luke, so I know it's a question that you want me to answer here. Now, if I don't answer your question, please re-ask it. It's possible you asked after I recorded a video. Please re-ask your questions. All right, question for Luke. I still don't understand why streaming features aren't available to everyone at once. Why do streaming services and streaming players roll out new features slowly to different devices and different accounts at once? This is something pretty much every major streaming service does and streaming player. We just talked about Roku's beta screen. A selection of Roku customers have it, a lot of them don't. Also, we see things like YouTube TV very slowly roll up beta features. Why do they do that? A couple reasons. First of all, if they roll out to everyone, it could swamp that feature. Their servers could be overloaded because people tend to use new features more right off the bat to test it out. But the second part here is for them to test it out. It allows YouTube or Roku or Fire TV to slowly give maybe 10% of their customers a new feature, take some data, maybe look for glitches that they didn't find in their own testing. Those that data then gets transmitted back to them and they say, hey, you know, we updated this and suddenly Netflix isn't working anymore. Hmm, let's roll that update back. Let's figure out why these two things aren't working together. We've seen that in the past too. Oh, suddenly the volume button doesn't work properly. You press up and the volume goes down, you press down the volume goes up or something weird like that happens. So that's why they don't roll it out to everybody. It allows them to manage the rollout because people often use it more when it first comes and to look for any glitches or other issues that may be negatively infect, impacting the rollout to see if they need to fix something before it becomes more widely available. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. I would really appreciate your support. We'll be back again real soon.